Hey guys, thanks for supporting the generic tech support channel. This is Tech Guy one Just wanted to thank you guys all for making this channel great. Like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Hey guys, welcome to Windows XP Granite Edition. So, over the past couple weeks we've been working together on trying to figure out specifically what it is that we can do to secure Windows XP. Now this particular system that we're building here is a vanilla version of Windows XP with a 20 gig hard drive, 4 gigs of memory, and 2 cores. This should be roughly what you would get in a Pentium 4 with hyper-threading, so 2 cores, 1 core for the physical and 1 core for hyper-threaded. And then 4 gigs of memory, which should be, at this point, if you have a Windows XP machine that's still running and you don't have 4 gigs of memory in it, you know, that's something that you should probably get with the times. I mean, in reality, you know, we could say, hey, we want to run this thing with uh, 64 megs, but I'm not going to do that through the process here to show you how this works, just because it would take forever to actually run the video. So I'm just going to standardize this with uh, how I'm going to install it and just follow it as I would normally do for an installation of Windows XP. On this particular system, since this is a VM, we're going to just select quick and we're going to format this thing and get this thing up and running, and then we will kick off the video from that point. Okay guys, so we are in the Windows XP system. And in this video, what I intend to do is walk you through the process of updating your Windows XP system to the Granite XP edition that we've been working on. Now keep in mind, during this process, I'm gonna call this an alpha release, meaning that I've done testing with beta to make sure that the applications work and that the operating system still functions. However, I don't have any third party anything installed on this thing. This is out of the box configuration, and if we go to the add remove programs, you'll see that, that we have nothing. If we go to updates, we have nothing. So nothing is installed on this operating system right now. So the first thing we have to do with this operating system to prep it for our installation is to make sure that we set a username and password on this system. And this is the most important part of this whole process, because if you don't do this, you'll lock yourself out of the system once you apply those registry modifications. Now with professional version of Windows XP, it's pretty simple. You just local users and groups, go to users and we'll choose new user, give it a username, and get a bit of password. Password has to be at least eight characters, has to have two special characters, two numbers, and at least a single capital. That's important because if you don't have that, after you run, the, run those keys, the system will not allow you to log into the system. It'll lock you out. So make sure you're at least eight characters, one uppercase, two special, and two number. I believe the limitation with Windows XP is 12 characters, so don't go beyond that. And also try to avoid using the at symbol at the beginning of the actual pa password. Also, importantly, do not put spaces in your password especially on Windows XP, but in general, don't put spaces in your password. Okay, so once you have your username and password set, hit Create, and you'll see it listed right here. And when I did this before, I threw an error because I already have that account added. Um, obviously, we have the administrator account, but we're going to go into the Tor account. We want to make sure that it's the member of the administrators group. If it's not, you're going to choose to add, and you'll type in administrators, and you'll click Check Name, and you'll hit OK and you'll make sure that you have the administrators. Now, if you have the administrators now in there and users at the same time, select users and hit remove and then hit okay. You should only have the member of and have the administrators listed. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we wanna set a password for the administrator account. So we'll choose set password, hit proceed, and then put a password in. If your password is four characters and all lowercase and it's just like admin or something else or ADM one or something like that, that's not going to work. You have to have at least eight characters, one uppercase, two special, two number. If that doesn't exist, again, you run the risk of locking yourself out. Also, your password cannot contain any word of the username. So if you have a pass, if you have a username like Tor, and you want to use like Tor123 double exclamation point with a capital T, that's not going to work. It'll throw an error, and you won't be able to log into the system. So again, eight characters, one capital, two special, two number. Once you have that set, you'll click OK. Password set, great. So now we have the administrator and we have our Tor account. Both are in the administrator's group. Neither are in the user's group, 
both of them have passwords with at least eight characters. Whether or not you use the same password on both is up to you. The system's not going to check that. The system is going to check is for the length once you run those scripts. So it's important that you have a password in here that meets those uh, character uh, requirements. So now that we have our password set for our user accounts, the next thing we want to do is we're going to want to change our network connection status. So we're going to open up our network connections, go to properties, go to TCP IP and properties, choose advanced, choose wins, and click the disable net BIOS over TCP PIP and click OK. Click OK and click close. You'll need to do that in order for the scripting to work correctly, in order for you to get all of the um, Landman server configuration and Landman workstation configuration in order for the NIST 800-171 Windows 10 crap to work on Windows XP. If you don't have that set and you run those scripts, you'll still have the back door into your IPC dollar sign uh, network share, which at that point you're on your own is from a security standpoint. Um, the problem is, is with Windows XP, there's no way to configure the restricted anonymous or null access to a specific user group like administrators versus users. That didn't exist in SMB version one, so we have to disable that in order for that to work correctly. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna create a folder called tools if it doesn't already exist in the root of the C drive. And we wanna place our package inside of the tools directory. Once you copy things over, this is how it should look. You should have a folder that says registry, a folder that says updates, and a folder that says file system. And then a folder that has readme information. Make sure you read the readme information. It's very important because if you don't follow the readme information, well, chances are if you, follow, if you, if you open the readme, you probably saw the URL and that's how you're here. But if you didn't follow that and you didn't follow the, UR, the URL and you haven't checked Chances are you're going to end up in problems. The reason why is, again, you need to make sure you meet that password configuration before you start the process. If not, you're going to have issues with this installation process. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through the actual configuration uh, process of the system. Now, after you have your password set, we've already made the changes to our NetBIOS configuration. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the registry. And we want to merge the POS ready registration. So the, this, what this script will do or what this does is it adds the POS ready stuff into the actual registry. And that gives you the ability to run the point of sale updates on your Windows XP machine. So we're just going to hit merge. Yes. Okay. Once that's merged, we need to now reboot the system before we do anything else. So let's restart. Okay. So now that the system's back up, we got to know go back, we have to navigate back into our C drive and into our tools directory and back into registry. And we're going to see our alpha security Windows 10 XP registry modification file. And if we go into here and we choose edit, there is an enormous amount of data and configuration in here. And this is all going to be security edits or modifications to your system to lock down and secure the actual system based off of the CIS benchmarks for Windows 10. Now, while extensive time was spent on making sure that the modifications in here work with Windows XP and aren't 100% just for Windows 10, there is a possibility that something in here could screw something else up on your machine. So if you're not starting with a base vanilla copy of Windows XP, make sure you have a good backup because I don't know what that'll affect in other systems running other pieces of software. Now what we're going to do is before we actually merge this is we want to go into tools and fo folder options and choose view and we want to show hidden files and folders we want to uncheck the hide extensions for known file types and uncheck the hide protected operating system files. And then hit apply and hit OK. Next, you're going to want to open up and navigate specifically to the C Windows security folder. And in here, you're going to have the EDB configuration. That's going to be your database configuration for the vast majority of your updates as well as your security settings for your SecEdit. 
Now, that database is red for the sec edit details. And the reason why I say that and bring that up is because in here, in the file system under C tools, you're gonna have database logs template and you're gonna have the EDB check file. You're gonna have the recovered fragmentation, all the data in here. Eventually what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to take the system file system details from this particular folder and replace everything that's in this folder with what's in this folder. Now that's only necessary if you run into an issue or a situation where when you do the merge of the registry configuration, you are missing configuration. And the way you'll be able to tell that is unfortunately the only real way is you'll have to go into the registry and at least check one or two of the keys to make sure that they've applied. I haven't found a way right now, at least in our package configuration, to be able to create or generalize a, an error that indicates whether or not something was missed on the import or the adaptation of the configuration. So I included this as a failsafe just in case you do need to upload this data to the actual system. The system that this was taken from is already deleted and destroyed. So even if you pull information from this, you, I mean, in reality is, is if you attempted to access that system, good luck because it doesn't exist anymore. So with that said, let's go now into our registry. Let's right click on our Alpha Security Windows XP, Windows 10 XP Ridge, and let's merge this file. And yes, and okay. So now that we have our registry merge completed, we are going to reboot the system. Okay, so now on boot, you should notice that we have control alt delete to get into the actual system versus going to the generic Windows XP GUI based logon. So we're gonna log into the system, so we'll control alt delete. You're gonna notice that we're gonna get a notification here about Granite XP 2024 edition, as well as details about how this is a beta package. Keep that in mind that this is still under work. So this is not something that I would call fixed and I sure as heck wouldn't call this secure compared to a Windows 10 or 11 system with all the same security and updates. All things considered, when you run the Nessus scan between this system and the Windows 10 system with the same updates and everything applied, even though this system shows cleaner, that doesn't necessarily mean it is cleaner. There's still bugs in Windows XP that while I did everything I could under my control to, to block out and lock out, it doesn't mean that it's gonna be supported by Microsoft. So that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so let's click on okay. Then we'll have to put in our password that we created. Now, if you didn't use enough characters or you didn't follow the first part of this video to correctly create a password and you go to hit enter here, the system will not allow you to log into the system. Okay, so now our system has the security configuration on it that we use to merge and actually secure the system. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to run the updates. Now, while the updates should work, and I use that term loosely, should work directly from the updates itself without any additional update configuration, I would suggest you grab the WSUS offline installer and run the updates through the WSUS offline installer first. So with that said, let's double click on our WSUS offline installer and let's choose what we want specifically installed on the system. I'm gonna to choose to automatically reboot and recall the updates. And then we're gonna to choose to start. Now this is going to run through the automated automated process of running the updates on the system based off of the WSUS offline package. Now keep in mind this is only the XP Service Pack 3 updates. This does not contain the updates for the point of sale or the embedded systems. Now something you'll notice is that as soon as you put WSUS offline on the system after you've run your registry configurations is that the system's going to create a temporary profile and that temporary profile is going to do an auto logon on your auto uh, recycle or restart. So every time the system has to restart to run the update, it'll restart itself and it will log itself back on. With the exception of one screen, which is the pop-up screen that notifies that you're accessing a secure system that is a beta version for the generic tech support channel. So 
You'll have to click OK on that in order for the system to auto log back into the system to continue on to download and install the updates. And I mean download loosely, it downloads them from the ISO file and actually applies them to the system. Okay guys, so the system's back up now after running all the WSUS updates. Didn't really take that long. You can see down in the clock specifically how long it took if you want to just check the previous clip. So we are now up to date. We go into the control panel, we can go into the add remove programs, we can show updates, and that will show us the updates that were available on our WSUS offline installer. And if we go into the command prompt, we can see that we have 30 hotfixes installed. And you'll notice that we have a breakdown of files versus the actual updates. Now, I don't know what's up with Windows XP, if that was something that changed or something that was funky in the operating system at one point or another. I don't remember that being the case, but it's been a while since I've used XP in the real world as far as from a, um, a daily driver usability uh, functionality. Now, with that said, there's 30 hotfixes installed, 30 rollups that existed on the WSUS offline installer. But if we now go into our tools directory again, and we go into updates, we're going to have package updates and we're going to have Windows XP updates. And if we arrange this stuff by name, we have 715 XP updates. We have specifically the point of sale 2009 roll up updates from 2014 through current, which uh, will to 2021, I believe, was the last year for the point of sale 2009 updates and extended support. So that gives you all of the updates until 2020, 2021. Now, with that said, I have two scripts in here. We have second round and we have first round. And if we edit these, and we can see the first round updates, we'll update these specific updates because these specific updates do require a reboot in order for us to run the second portion of the updates, which are these updates. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you that this process, just to run the updates on this first set of updates in this one folder, not including the package updates, takes about an hour and 45 minutes. Now you could double click on it and walk away, but it'll take about an hour and 45 minutes for it to complete. Um, maybe not our initial first round should take maybe no more than 15, 20 minutes, but the second round takes about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. Again, you could double click on it and walk away. And once it's finished, the system will reboot itself after it applies all the updates. And I believe the total amount of updates with all the point of sale updates is somewhere around 958 to 1000 updates. So that should give you an idea as to how many updates there are available for Windows XP from Service Pack 1 all the way through the point of sale 2009 edition. This includes all the rollups, all the uh, security patches for your Internet Explorer, all the security patches for Media Player, all the security patches for the .NET Framework, and everything and anything in between. With that said, it does take time to apply these updates. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is since there is no run as administrator, it's gonna to wanna to find the first round batch file and double click on it. And this is gonna cause the Windows operating system to apply the updates. And once it's done applying these updates, it's gonna just prompt with a 30 second reboot time and it'll reboot itself. Now, for whatever reason, you don't want it to reboot at the end. You can either modify the script or if you have another command prompt open, you can do shutdown minus A to abort the actual reboot, and that'll re abort the reboot for the Windows updates to be applied. As we could see, the updates just finished. We're counting down from 30 seconds. Once it gets to zero, it will reboot the system. If you don't want it to wait 30 seconds, you wanna change it to three seconds, you could do that too. I just left it that way just in case anybody needed to abort the uh, reboot for whatever reason. Okay, so the system's now coming back up, but I figure before we go and run the additional updates, let's take a look to see how many we have now installed. Okay, so so far we don't have any additional updates applied. And that is possible that during our installation process for our WSUS offline installer, that those particular updates may be newer, the same age, or older than the updates that were provided. And as a result, it would just overwrite it, which would give us the same amount of hotfix number. So with that said, let's move on to our second round updates. So when this applies, this screen is literally just gonna flicker and go down the, the list of available updates. Now you could do an add echo off if you really wanted to to stop that from showing in there. I just didn't see a point in doing that. 
So if we now go up to our tools directory, we can see the second round updates, and this is gonna show you a log file of all the updates applied. You're gonna see that we have the readme and the first round updates is blank. Now it'll only be blank if there isn't available updates available, like through the update package to actually apply to the system. So if there are no updates available, you'll see zero KB. If there are updates available, you're gonna see that number grow every time it actually applies an update. And the total size of that based off of the 715, 800, let's call it 800 updates that are actually in that folder, is gonna be somewhere around 27 megs. You should still be able to open that with just regular notepad to view the updates. But as it applies the updates, we're gonna see the additional details added in here for each one of the KBs that are actually applied to the system. And there's gonna be quite a bit of that information in here. So if you ever have to go in and debug anything or wanna figure out specifically what update caused a problem, you can use that. Now, with that said, the corresponding number, so XP30, XP31, is the update itself in the, um, the XP updates. The naming convention is just XP and then a number. So XP52, 53, 54, and so on and so forth. You're gonna have to use this number here and correspond that to the number that's in the log because as stated in the previous videos, the Windows update process unfortunately pulls the GUID from the WSUS server that created or provided the updates for the system. And since there's really no rhyme or reason what that GUID corresponds to, there's no KB article that goes specifically with a specific GUID. So as a result, the only way to really do anything about it is to just use the XP number and use the corresponding number at the timestamp inside of the actual log file. If not, it's nearly impossible for you to figure out specifically what update is what inside of the actual logging. It's just something that unfortunately, the way the WSUS server exported the data through the actual um, PowerShell script, it's the only way I was able to get it to work correctly on our XP machine like this. Now we could see just as it's going right now, we're on XP57. We have 94 hot fixes installed now. We can see there's quite a bit more of these files in here. And it'll just keep going and going and going and so on and so forth until it finishes. And at which point it will just reboot the system and indicate that the system has, uh, you know, pending updates to apply. So we're at 102 hot fixes. Now what I've done with every single one of these things through the script logic is to put it in quiet mode without forcing a reboot, which will allow you to run the executables, not the MSI files for the installation of the update without a restart. If you were to use the MSI files, unfortunately, the system will automatically reboot after every single one of these stupid updates. So it wasn't worth doing that and just using the executable to do so. And that's why it's broken up because there are certain updates that require a reboot. Other updates don't require a reboot. The system updates that require a reboot are in their own folder or have their own uh, script. So, you know, first round, second round. And then eventually, once we get to that point, if we go in here into the package updates, we're going to have round three. So third round of updates will then apply these actual .NET fixes as well as these security updates that are in this actual uh, folder here. And each one of those also require an individual reboot. But because of the way I have it scripted, it won't actually reboot after each every single one of them. It'll wait till it gets to the end and then do a single reboot so that way you don't have to wait for it every single time. Now this includes all of the patches. I mean all of the patches. The Windows XP Service Pack 1, 2, and 3 patches. It includes all of the patches for the point of sale system, all of the patches for the embedded system, all of the, pa uh, the, the updates and security packages for the point of sale 2009 system, which is different than point of sale system and different than the embedded system. And then it contains a couple CE updates as well, which was based on XP, but those updates, when applied, do fix security holes that existed after the initial end of life from the Service Pack 3. So that should bring your system up fully up to date as of the last date for the uh, ESU support uh, package for Windows XP. So the end of life on XP with all the updates, not including the individual allocated updates that were technically unofficially released, which are also in this package, are updates that they end May of 2019. Then there's a couple that exist from 2021, which fix some structural or security issues that were 
zero day flaw patches that were released outside of the Microsoft catalog that are also included in this package. So all things considered, this has updates until 2021, which is a long time. That's roughly 20 years of updates for Windows XP. As a result, this is about as secure as I can make this operating system without modifying the Windows 10 32-bit edition updates to work. And most of the registry configuration that we applied through those scripts correct a lot of the security updates that would have taken place between 2021 and now. And I mean now as in April of 2024. Anything that goes beyond April of 2024 would likely require us to add additional uh, controls or configuration to lock down the system. And I don't know what those will look like or if those will even be possible in the future. But as it sits right now, one of the only flaws that still ex exist in the system after running all these updates is that the NTP time services uses a UDP broadcast port on port 123 outbound to the nist.gov website in order for it to maintain uh, time zone controls. It's using the Windows 11 time zone configuration added inside of the actual scripting, which allows the system to communicate with that particular protocol and work correctly. Unfortunately, I can't secure that port, that 123 UDP port, and get it to work correctly without allowing that communication outbound. Now, if you want to stop that port or if you want to do the W32 time service and disable that, you can do that, and that would solve that issue. But that's the only security issue that I know of, at least in this operating system, with all of the updates and configuration done. And once this thing's done running all of the updates, we'll run a Nessus scan on this at the end of the video to do proof of concept on a full build that was out of the box that you watched from beginning to end. Just as an update, we are now at 223 hotfixes installed on this operating system. And still counting. We're at XP 169 and going and so on and so forth. And while this thing is continuing to run updates, I figured I would show you that we're currently using roughly about seven and a half gigs of storage to run the operating system with the updates that are applied. And it is still pumping updates at this point. We can actually jump back over here so we can see that. We're at XP 204, 205, 207, and so on and so forth. Now you'll notice that in some of these things we're gonna have gaps. The reason why is because during our testing procedure on the configuration of this, it was discovered that there were reboots required for certain files. And putting those files together with these other files would have caused us to have to stop, reboot, and then start up from that number again. So rather than doing that, I was able to package the system together so that way I could apply the updates that all required the update and then reboot in one configuration so we don't have to reboot after every single update. With that said, we're still pumping away here, so now we're at 7.44 gigs of use space. And this will continue to go, and obviously keep in mind that right now it's this drive itself is housing the updates files themselves. So once you remove that, you'll gain back two gigs of drive space. There's about two gigs of actual files in there. They're not that big, so Windows XP updates were not that large. I'd say the largest one that's in there is probably maybe 50 megs, which is tiny in today's standards anyway. So something to keep in mind with this is that it's not a one-to-one, -one, right? So we're at 323 updates and we're at XP 248. So even if we added the 30 to that, we wouldn't end up with the 323. And the reason why is because there's updates and packages included in these executables. Some of them contain one or two updates. Some of them remove an update and change the way the control or the configuration is. So as it goes through, this is not gonna be a one-to-one -one configuration. But that said, it will eventually finish once we see XP 715 in here, then we know that we're nearing the end. There's additional updates in that package that are outside of just the XP's when we get to the POS updates after that, and it will continue on to run those. Just to keep you guys up to date, we're now at XP 475, and we are counting. We are at 603 hotfixes installed on this particular operating system. It is now 4.58 p.m. We are still on the 22nd. Okay, guys, so it appears that our point-of-sale updates are now applying. So we're at POS 23, I think at a 31. And then at that point, the system will post for a system reboot. Okay, guys, so that's the last update. Now it's just going to count down to 30 seconds. And we have 951 hotfixes installed at this point. And we have one more series of updates to run for our net configuration. And that should update our system completely up to date. Okay, so the last thing we gotta do now is we gotta run our packaged updates. 
And if we go into the edit of this configuration, we're going to see a variety of different commands in here. And that's based off of the version of the actual command. So let's now run this and install the last round of updates on this particular system. Okay guys, so that completes our updates on this actual system. Let's jump into Nessus, run a tenable scan, and let's come back with our results. Okay guys, so as you can see, we ran our scan against our alpha build, and we have one info, which is still the NTP time protocol for the outbound connection for port 123. That's the only configuration we get in Nessus at this point on our Windows XP system, meaning that our XP system is just as secure as anything that would be Windows 10 as far as a CIS benchmark would be concerned. So keeping that in mind, what could you use this package for? Well, you should be able to use this package for your vanilla version of Windows XP. You should be able to use it for the SASNet Windows XP. You should be able to use it for any Windows XP system that's out there of any customization, including the vanilla version, to secure the actual operating system. If you guys are building an operating system using this configuration, send me an email and let me know because if it's something you want me to test without putting it out there, I will test it first and send you the results so that way you could secure the operating system the hey best guys, you so can. I would say our suggested release date or likely the release date of this operating system is going to be on May 3rd. During the past 24 hours, I've done a lot of work on this operating system uh, as far as the configuration is concerned and have an additional package here that I'm going to add to this, which is some corrections to the remote assistance package, as well as the um, system management. So basically our system restore, disabling that, um, disabling the um, requirements for our configuration uh, standards for, um, for our terminal services, so remote uh, assistance and remote access controls will be disabled. In addition, we'll set up the priority terminal so that the, there's a way in the configuration on the system to actually config our page file to use four gigs, and that'll be set for the four gig maximum for the uh, page file for Windows XP. Um, and then we're also going to add uh, some additional configuration in here, so like the priority separation um, basically what that does, it gives us the ability to control the background services, the front end programs, and to equate them out for our memory utilization, which was a process that was introduced in the point of sale 2009 system. It doesn't exist in XP Service Pack 3, but we're get, we've added that registry key configuration in the other configs. So we might as well add an additional registry configuration so we could actually control it. So these are things that I'll add to the package before we release it on May 3rd. Uh, the Git repository will likely have script details, but I'm going to use the archive location for the actual hosting of the files because the update packages are about 2 gigs in size and the Git repository doesn't allow me to update them unless I did them uh, itemized. And that's just too much of a pain in the neck to download you know, 815 different links. So. I will update the links and create another video on the date of the release, but this video should give you guys some understanding or some idea as to what this operating system actually does and how it performs. Now I'll leave you with this. Um, this operating system was tested in the hypervisor environment or, or VMware here. However, it has also been tested on a Dell C600, which is a Pentium 3M class processor with 256 megs of PC100 memory, um, SD RAM, and then it also has a PCM CIA card slot with a 54G wireless card on it and tested with that as well. And works flawlessly with an IDE drive and 256 megs of memory and a single core. So all in all, you guys should have no problem running it. With that said, I will say that the additional time required in order to install the updates because of the speed of that disk. Now that disk is a 4200 RPM drive. It, it took about three and a half hours to install it. So that's just something to keep in mind that unfortunately I have no control over that. If you run Disk Keeper, expand the MFT, defrag this, the page file and the MFT and the actual system and then do a compression of all your folders, it will drastically increase the speed of the system before you run these updates and these configuration. Um, but Again, that's up to you. Uh, that's, that's your call. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, thanks for the support. And thanks for all the channel help and information that you guys provided me and, the, uh, and ideas you've provided me through the, uh, the chat. And thanks a lot, guys. Take it easy. Have a good night.